welcome back to another installment of that 911 guy. As you can see behind me, precious cargo. It's exactly what it looks like. They are some wooden deck chairs from my back garden. Why have I got garden furniture in my 911? Well, I'm not reviewing any cars today. Instead, I'm just heading out for a chat. I'm gonna be meeting up with Tom Exton, better known of course as TGE TV on YouTube. Well, enthusiast I think is a better description because I think the term YouTuber or influencer there are certain negative connotations attached to it almost these days. And I have to say, without getting too political, the um, unscrupulous actions of some individuals at the top of the tree has only kind of sought to muddy the water a little bit more, in my humble opinion. Um, however, there are some really good guys in the game. Tom definitely seems to be one of them. So we're gonna have a chat with him about P cars, in particular reference to the 996, and then we'll go for a good old burn in the Oxfordshire countryside. Lovely stuff. Tom George Exton, aka TGE. Hello. Cheers for letting us come sit on your drive. Yeah, in no worries at all. Sweltering sun. Communal driveway anyway, <laughs> so thank the neighbours as well. YouTube, you've been doing it for five years now, 54 million views. It's quite That's a lot of wasted time, isn't no, it? For, for the well, general public. Ar arguably not. When you started five years ago, generally speaking, before we get onto the Porsche stuff, like what was your kind of goal? Was it to to be doing all of this chaos, as, as you say? or um, It was basically actually just to faff around with cars, which is what I wanted to do, yeah. but be able to call it a business. That was the overriding <laughs> <laughs> aim of the channel. There was no that. plan there, that's, really? yeah, but that's yeah. what I knew I wanted. Well, it's been an eclectic journey. You've obviously been, you've, you've done the supercar thing, I feel. Yes. Then we got onto Porsches. We'll talk about like 996 specifically shortly. Yep. What's the appeal for kind of Porsche with you to begin with? Because the first one was GT3 RS, was it not? My first, first, first Porsche was, I'm going to start saying Porsche now because I keep getting told off. It. It's Porsche down the pub and then it's Porsche in front of the Yeah, especially your cats. lot. Yeah, I can't get yeah, that yeah. wrong. They'll, they'll, put, they'll be pulling me apart already. Um, so my first Porsche was a 2.7987 Boxster. Right, pre-YouTube or... YouTube. Uh, it was 2005. Uh, no, sorry, the car was 2005, but it was pre-YouTube. That was my first proper car. Okay. And that's what got me hooked, like, on the brand. Yeah. Um, and I still, to this day, that was probably one of the best cars I've ever had. I loved it. It was great. Um, so, no, the, the, the GT3 RS wasn't the first Porsche that I had, Porsche. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you get that wrong. But the first uh, YouTube Porsche was, yeah, was GT3 yeah. RS. That Porsche lineup's expanded like exponentially since I feel yeah. um, and I mean yeah you, you've had your fingers in many Porsche pies <laughs> going from well the, the early air cooled stuff so obviously at, at the moment with your G50 Targa yeah book ended with well 992 Turbo S GT3 and coming as well what made you go for the older stuff first of all um, do you enjoy the older stuff as much as the newer stuff um, I just do you know what I just fancy the 912 that I've got that was really kind of spare at the moment. I was sat at work and I just thought, let me just have a look. Like, what, what can I pick one of these up for? So I just, I bought the cheapest one I could see with matching numbers. And uh, I thought I might hate it, in which case I'm not gonna do any more old stuff. Um, but I just, I just love the way they look. They're just so cool. Uh, and then as soon as I, I drove it back from Bath the whole way to London, and I was like, this is just one of the best things I've ever done. You bought it at the right time as well, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, it, it, don't get me wrong, that car was a pig anyone in their right mind wouldn't have bought it. And it was probably sat there for months before I bought it because everyone turned up, looked at it properly and <laughs> well, thought, not, not with a barge pole. Yeah. But me, I turned up and I was like, it's green. Brilliant, I'll have it. <laughs> Same colour as that, Irish, Irish green. green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that, that, was, that was where the old stuff started, but I, I'm hooked now. Mm. It's a really slippery, expensive, fun slope. Okay, so this is kind of what I wanted to discuss. You do need a wedge to maintain the old stuff, particularly if you're buying something that where you then have to do the restoration rather than yeah. buying a car that's been restored recently as well. Yeah. Um, but you all seem to be coming out the other side smiling, which, you know, I mean, especially on 912s, I had a friend that bought a 912 in good faith, very best intentions. He ranks it as alongside marrying his first wife, one of the worst <laughs> things he's ever done. So, but you seem to kind of get a buzz from it all. That's kind of the, the impression I get. I mean, I'm not, some of the bills I've not been that happy by, but you know, you know as well as I do, working in the YouTube sphere, you, you can work with companies and brands and they can be really nice to you. So um, whether or not that's, you know, mates rates, whether or not that's, you know, you get things um, done slightly quicker, some of the edge is taken off it. And, and that's one of the reasons why I love what I do. 
because you just get access to kind of all these opportunities. You get to do these cool things like um, restos where it's slightly less painful than it otherwise would be for kind of Joe Public. And the, the, the other side of that is, it is painful in the fact you've got to make a load of content with it, but I actually like making content. So actually the whole process isn't, I don't mind it at all. It's, it's not quite as bad as you might think. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sadly, I'm not quite at the stage where I'm being paid to restore my cars. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if there's any brands out there that want to <laughs> want to pay me to restore a rusty old box. I love how he looks at the I'm camera here. For yeah, that I as well. well, they're there, aren't they? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, that, that's that's the reality of it being totally transparent. Yeah, so um, yeah, yeah. it's still it's still expensive. It's still time consuming. It's still stressful. Um, but it's nowhere near as bad, and it, it's definitely worth it for me. You're quite honest about your approach to your cars um, yeah. and how they are there for content. Yep. Uh, you know, I don't know if you would say primarily, so if you look at your Targo and your 912, the, the early stuff, is it more an ownership thing or it, it, does it serve a purpose as the, is the content the driver of it? The, the content is, but that said, then there's, if you just wanted views, you'd go and buy, I don't know, an RS3 and map it to a million brake horsepower <laughs> and wrap it chrome. Yeah. And that would get the views, but, um, the content, yeah, I mean, I guess it is all run as a business, so there has to be a commercial element to it. When I buy something, I've got to think, you know, what, where is this taking my channel? What content am I going to get out of this? What are the people that want that content? What are they, what are they like as well? Am I building the right audience? Am I being true to what I like? And is my audience then going to be reflective of me and my, my interests? Right. And I can run this thing long term and actually enjoy this job. Yeah, that's all a consideration. So they're not mutually exclusive. You don't have to buy something that. You can you can you can monetize and turn it into a business, but you also hate. You, I think you can t combine those two things. And uh, the classics, um, I was saying on a video recently that it's kind of dipped the viewership on my channel quite a lot. Mm. But I think what's happening is I'm transitioning my audience. There's a there's a I'm generally speaking the younger audience that want kind of the straight pipe Lambos and the chrome wraps and the tinted windows and all the rest of it. They don't want to see some guy chopping out um, a sill out of, a, <laughs> out of an 87 Targa yeah. and replacing it with a sill that basically looks the same but with no rust on it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I find that really interesting and like, I'm amazed by what can be done. Yeah. But they don't want to see that. They just want to see you know, flames coming out of an exhaust, which is, you know, I actually built my channel on some of that, but what I'm doing is now trying to transition away from that. So um, yeah, it's a bit painful to see the, the views dip a bit, but what I do know is that the people that are still there, sort of 20, 30,000 people still watching those videos, they are good eggs, and they're the sort of people I would happily, you know, hang around with, chat to, bore the nuts off. They'd bore the nuts off me. You feel like you're building a real community there, I'm, yeah. I, and I love it. So yeah. yeah, it's interesting times. Yeah, I want to go back to the the Porsche thing generally. If your first like proper car, as you're saying, pre YouTube was a Porsche. There's, surely there's something a bit more sort of personal about that. Yeah, hundred percent. My first like model car that I had. Um, remember when the Boxster kind of prototype kind of concept thing came out, the silver one with like the red interior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they've just basically remade with the 25th anniversary. Yeah. I've still got that in my mum's house. That's my first proper car model, and I think my like godmother or something bought it for me. I was just obsessed with this thing. It's one of these ones where the steering wheel moved the wheels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. since snapped off, but. Um, <laughs> Boxster's always been kind of that. That was where I thought I'd be pitching in. I thought if I if I can get a Boxster in life, you know, I've absolutely nailed it. Um, so yeah, that's that's where I kind of came into the brand. But they're cracking. Yeah, I want to come on to yes. to nine nine sixes now. You're a real advocate, I think, of of this car. And again, on one of your videos that I've seen recently, you remarked that it doesn't get the views at, no. compared to some of your other stuff. No. But I feel like you've you've really kind of stuck with this car. I mean, you've had it two years now. Yeah. Um, it's been in the garage for most of it. Yep. Is that a personal thing for you with this car, or or is it just kind I of just bad luck? I just think it's cracking. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I, I just think it's cracking that went the design on there, and I'm not having a go. I just I just think that's the best looking <laughs> oh, oh. 996. No, no, no. I, <laughs> yours is cracking. Obviously, it's a very it is a very special 996. But I just the money that they were when I bought one of these, I just thought. There can't be many cars, bang for buck, that gets you into classic 911 ownership. There's that much of a laugh that it's got usable power. They're reliable on the whole. I mean, bar, <laughs> bar what happened on the way here. Uh, fuel indicator, good old fuel indicator, just yeah. does what it wants. Um, but no, I, I, I love it. I think it looks amazing. It drives amazing. It puts a smile on my face. You can, you can proper ham foot it. You can heel and toe, you can actually enjoy it. Mm. And a lot of the modern stuff, you can't do that and also, the bills that come with these things, yeah, it does get out of hand, but nowhere near as out of hand as any of the modern stuff. The All specialist the cool stuff, to be fair, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, so, do these rust? Yeah, every car rusts. Yeah. I like, mean, is there a rust problem? It 
depending on these cars. No, they're all galvanised by, okay, by this perfect. age. So, right, so why are you worrying? <laughs> no, I'm just rust is like this. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> That's hovering over, it's hovering over, hovering over yeah. me now. I'm yeah. kind of concerned by it. Yeah. But as a business decision, it probably wasn't the wisest business decision in that it doesn't it doesn't hawk the, the classic audience in. It doesn't hawk the kind of real kind of simpletons that want to just have the awful chrome wrap stuff. I keep having a go at chrome wraps. <laughs> I don't have a problem with chrome wraps, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't get either end, but what it does is a sweet spot of guys um, that were going to go and buy an M2. They were going to go and buy an M4, but they actually think, do you know what? I'm going to go and buy basically a classic 911. And there's a huge pot of people now that in my DMs are like, just bought a 996. It's a whole, it's mad. Well, when you bought this two years ago, I, I feel like 996s were just on kind of the cusp or, or wasn't quite crest of a wave, but it was starting to get a bit hot, wasn't it? Mm. What do you think of like the 996 and like where it's going and, and whatnot? In terms of values, I know it's awful to talk about values, but that's all I do on my channel. Uh, that's all people care about. I think, I don't think they're going to be mental money. I mean, they made God knows how many of those, yeah. tens of thousands, yeah. hundreds of thousands, whatever. So they're not going to be mental money. But what I do think is unmolested and kind of well looked after and kind of OEM plus, I hope. Um, I think they'll be fine. You know, what, what, what's a nice one of those now? 30, 35 grand yeah. thereabouts. Well, it's talking yourself up there, isn't it? <laughs> I've, well, I've seen seconds. a few people flying yeah. a kite and I'm using that yeah, as the yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say um, 25 to 30. OK, fine. For, for an, an average one, I know, you know, you've put a lot of money into that and, and you know, I'd probably it's a similar with mine. It's, you know, a lot of money's gone into that. I'd be disappointed at the average value for that. So I get what you're saying. But, yeah. um, you know, the C4S, they made a lot of them. And I don't know about you, but I've had people messaging me on Instagram and asking like, oh, is C4S, what's, what's its kind of grade as a collector's car? And to my mind, it's not a collector's car. They made too many of them. Yeah. Unless you have a really unique spec, it's seriously low mileage. And obviously, you know, even if it doesn't, I'm used to losing money on a, on a lot of the cars I've had over the past few years. I'm used to losing money. And if you can come out even vaguely what you put in, in the first place, um, jobs are good. And we ignore the, the money we've spent on it because it's man math. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah That's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, if, if you're running your car and your channel, you know, as a business and you're making videos about spending money on your car, there's no reason why that can't be, you know, a bit more tax efficient than it otherwise would be anyway. You know, that's the other benefit of running a YouTube channel. So um, you can really man maths in here and, and convince yourself. I you're feel being like a, I need to take a shrewd notes businessman. of what you're yeah, yeah. doing. Really no, good. don't. Don't take any financial <laughs> advice off me. Otherwise right. you'll be um, up to you, up to there in debt yeah, like yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. So um, back to 996, yeah. why, why C4S? Because I assume you've, 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 you've realised or identified you want a 996 to begin with. Yeah. So, you know, why that out of, say, turbos or GT2s? I think GT2s are going to be really good news going forward. But Yes. Um, it's the usable power element of it. It's, it's all weather, obviously, being four-wheel drive. I mean, you can take that in the rain, whatever, and it's just, it's just brilliant. And also, just purely superficially, I just think it looks amazing. I think the rear end on the, on the, on the C4S 996 is one of the best rear ends Porsche have made. Agreed. I love the vents around the back corner there. Yeah. The strip light. In fact, it's it's wide arch. I think the turbo looks a bit, it's a bit fussy, and it doesn't. The design doesn't even work quite as well. Um, turbo is obviously a better car. You've said in a recent video that the project is done. Yeah, I've got some interior bits because I've got that horrible, you know, that plasticky leather stuff they thought was a good yeah, idea. Yeah. Um, I, that's all chipped and horrible in there. So I will get um, the guys at Rint to sort that out. But that's just me being anal and picky mm. and doing stuff that probably proper car guys will tell me off for doing. <laughs> right. I'm quite weird about stuff. I like stuff like, I don't know, if I'm doing something, I just want to do it properly. So what's the plan? What's the plan for, for, for this car in particular? No plan other than just have it. That's the irony. With all these things, the more that I'm buying, the more, the more time I need to spend earning money and the less time I'm getting to actually drive them. So all the conditions have got to be right. And you know, some of the really expensive stuff. Um, so it's nice to have a car like that where I can just use that for daily duties. I think that's my that's my 996. Something like a really funky spec turbo, maybe. Yeah, okay. I, I wouldn't mind one of those, like yeah. a really odd spec, like maybe like a green interior or a PTS car or something like that. That I don't want to spend GT2 money, GT2 or you know GT3 money. I don't want to. I don't want to do any of that. So yeah, that's probably that's probably it for now. And the other thing as well, what I loved about it, obviously the, the headlights, um, the GT1 car as well. That, so that, that era that, GT1 car. It didn't put you off then because everyone's, you know, oh, Friday headlights, you know, it's most ugly, 911 front end, no, ever, great. blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, That GT1 can... car's got it. Yeah. And those have got it. Right. And okay. that's it. You yeah. know, like, it's great. It's yeah. good. 
they, Porsche can do no wrong in my eyes. In my eyes, they've never really made a bad car. Like even the old Cayennes now with those headlights. Even I think I look at those and I think they're actually quite cool, even though they're probably turds. They look funny from some angles, I think. But just going back to where I mean, I said it was the Targa. I forgot about the 912. So yeah, if we're bookending. You really are start and finish that kind of Porsche lineage. Where do you think's the sweet spot? I, I know it's controversial, but I quite like the 991.2. The I've turbo Carrera, engines. Carrera T. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what, I actually watched, you know what, when I was buying the Carrera T, I actually watched your, your, your video on when you drove it to um, South of France, was it? And you drove it and just basically. Yeah, yeah, picked up from there. Yeah. Oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah there was yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought, Jamie, get, how's he got hold of one of them? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that helped my buying decision, but. Um, I actually really like the 991.2. I think the turbos, that little turbo engine's great. I know that's probably the worst thing to probably say to your audience. But yeah. I think it works on the Targa because it's a heavy car. Yeah. The, the T, as you've alluded to, because you've obviously bought another one, that is going to be really good news going forward in the right spec. Mm. Tin top, um, passive rear axle, 918 seats, etc. cetera, yeah. uh, rather than PDK glass roof and all that sort of jazz, you know? Yeah, 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 that's completely missed the point. I've seen a couple around, you know, with like fat, the, the fat boy seats and the sunroof and the privacy glass and all that stuff. And you just think, what were you doing? Mm. Why don't you just order a Carrera S? Yeah, or just a yeah. normal Carrera? That's the point. I think that's why when that car came out, people struggled with it reputationally. So like, well, I don't really understand what this is about. I think mm. now people, especially where the 992 is heavier, you know, wider, particularly at the front and whatnot, mm. the merit of that car is coming into its own. So yeah, I'll tell you, if you've, you've bought that at the right time again, to be honest, I, I, think, I think they'll go back up. Personally. I got in that at, well, you know, at some point I may sell it, so I don't want to be too blunt about it, but <laughs> yeah. I got in that at what a Ferrari dealer was giving in part X to a chap that's buying an F12. Yeah, yeah, so I, I saw your video on that. For it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, I admire your honesty on that. Yeah. Do you know well, what I mean? I mean the, 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 that's the thing as well. I, I don't want to look like I'm literally just going around willy nilly, just throwing cash around. I want people to know that I'm actually thinking about what I'm buying and you know the exit on these cars often isn't that painful at all because the the, the, the first question people say when they look at the channel they're like where's the money come from are you falling this trust fund something like that but actually if you explain the mechanics of it and they realize that what you can often come out of cars up these cars are free that then it starts to make sense but if you start just looking like you're just buying stuff without thinking throwing 30k in a hole here there and everywhere and depreciation then it does raise questions. It is, it, it is stupid and it's actually, it, it's just a waste of money. But no, I, I try and buy cleverly. I had no intention of buying another tea. I, was, I missed mine, uh, but I bought it new. I paid 107 for it. Yeah, yeah. And you know what they did. Yeah. Um, and I sold it to a good friend of mine actually for, I think it was early 90s maybe. So I, I got a kick in the nuts on that. Mm. Um, and then he, he sold it actually about five months ago. But he wanted top money for it, obviously, because he wanted to yeah. minimise the kick in the nuts. And yeah. I didn't want to, I wanted to kick him in the nuts, but because we're friends, I just let him get as much money as he could on the open market. So I was gutted. Um, and then this one came up. I was like, I'll have it. Mm. There was actually something on the Carrera T. I saw someone advertising a, a light and flywheel for that car. Is that a good idea? I just think that car is so awesome out the box. Yep. Mechanically, leave it. And, and the T, I kind of think if you're doing big horsepower and, and you know it's slightly missing the point of that car i 100 percent agree know? and the amount of money is like take it to literally take it to dms and you know put um it could put gts turbos in and you can do the gts turbo map and i'm like well, i don't want 600 brake through a manual box in a the, the whole point of that car is you can you can thrash it yeah and you can enjoy, you can enjoy the process of of getting up to speed and and really going through the gears and whatever if you start putting 600 brake in it you, you're back to I may as well just go and get in the F12 or, you know, yeah, or, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Or it, it does defeat the point a little bit. So no, I'm yeah. gonna, if I do anything to it, it'll be sort of more engagement based uh, mods as opposed to uh, power. You've got some projects coming up anyway, haven't you? Uh, don't know how much you kind of want to talk about At the about point that. in which we're filming this, it's not live, but the point at which, <laughs> joy of the internet, the point at which this goes out, um, I have bought a 944 Turbo. Uh, it is, I think it's called the Rose Edition, something Rose anyway. Absolutely no idea. No, nor you did need I. To tell me. Sorry. Nor did I, but I got sucked in. I saw it online and I was like, that's brilliant. Um, it was actually up at, it was, I think if you're in the realms of you know 944 Turbos, you'll know where it was. Um, so anyway, I bought it with, with my business partner who actually gives away minis. Right, okay. He does the UK minis things. 
Um, so we've basically bought this car and it's going to be in there very shortly. Uh, we're going to be giving it away. It's 945 Turbo anyway. It's got the script on the side. I've shown you pictures of it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's uh, so cool. It's got the script on the front wing, and it is this. As I say, it's this Rose Edition. So I think there's only 70 uh, right-hand drive cars. It's got a cool plate with it. Is that with the car, or are you having that? Uh, what? What was the plate? No, if you've seen it and it's on the plate, oh, okay, it, it yeah, can have it. Cool, like it's yeah. all, it's all there. It's yeah. part of the package. Um, so we're going to be giving that away. Uh, a company called Classic Giveaways, which is basically going to be um, my business partner doesn't know this yet, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to railroad him into us giving away classic Porsches because <laughs> right. he gives me an excuse to buy them in, yeah, have a little look yeah. at them, probably fiddle around with them. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm doing what. So you doing, get first dibs on them. Yeah, I right. get to. Yeah. Um, but it will be very definitely, I can't, I can't hoik them out of the company and just keep them because otherwise that will get dangerous. There will be no business in the end. It will just be me. <laughs> so we're just going to be buying like um, rare, classic, collectible uh, Porsches um, so, and occasional quirky ones. So we're going to be on the lookout for like real cool stuff. And unlike, there's loads of giveaway co companies like doing giveaways of all kind of brand new stuff. I think the cool thing will be with that is we'll give something to someone that they don't have to worry about using mm. because when they come to get out of it, it's going to be worth more than when it was handed to them. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, like 944 Turbos, I mean, what we bought it for and what they are on the market now compared to where they're going to be in years to come, I think, you know, they're never going to be a 964 Turbo, but there's going to be, as those continue to just disappear into the ether, yeah. it's going to drag everything up with them. And indeed, I've seen... I've seen 944s going up in the past year. Oh, they're um, compared to where they were as well, like mm. without doubt. So cracking idea, to be honest. We'll see where that goes. I can't wait. And do you know what? It's purely, it's just going to be nice to be able to meet someone and just go, there you go, enjoy. Best of luck with it. Um, we'll stop talking. Let's go for a drive yes. and, um, and get out of the sun. Perfect, yeah. Good idea. <laughs>